Morning, YouTubers. So I got a little bit of a fun video here, a little bit different. Now you saw in my previous video where I stick welded these guys on. Well, someone had asked me, hey, can you TIG weld these? Well, yeah, you actually can. I can tell you a lot of reasons why nobody does that, and it's simply because it takes so long. I mean, I could crank these out in a couple of minutes running 532 stick rods or even eighth inch rods, no issues. Well, TIG, you're in for like a half an hour or more to weld one of these. I mean, yeah, you can always crank up the amperage and use bigger rod, and there's all sorts of tricks to getting things done fast, but nobody really TIG welds these because of the time it takes, let's be honest. So I thought, well, why not try it and see what happens? I mean, I know it's going to make a pretty weld, but, you know, I've never done it before, really. So that's what this video is about. Let's get into it. You want to clean off all this mill scale off of everything, off the plate. Everything has got to be spotless. If you try and weld on this, stick will handle it, TIG, good luck. Your weld is going to probably get porosity at a minimum trying to weld over this stuff especially on this so you want to prep everything up good get it clean and then what i tend to do is i will weld two spot welds on this to raise this up to where it's slightly above the plate which will leave a small gap underneath so i can get full penetration the whole way underneath this edge so I fast forwarded this part just to uh, kind of get through this video faster since this really isn't a how to TIG weld. It's more or less just an overview of how to do this if you were to TIG weld it. Now I welded two small spot welds there and then I tack weld the hook to those spot welds which creates a slight gap in the bottom to where it makes the weld penetrate through the, to the other side. All right, well, I will be quiet, and I'm just going to play some soft music in the background to entertain you while you watch this. So apparently my microphone died and I had no idea. So uh, everything up until this point has been vo voice dubbed over and I apologize for that. I, I'll pay attention better next time. So we're all ready right now to do our second pass on this side to bring it out a little bit more. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Still some crap in there. Looking pretty good. Again, we need to let this cool off. 
Let's see how bad the plates warped. It's starting to warp just same as a stick weld. It's favoring this side more. So the next pass that we're going to do is this side. And we may do, I think, two more passes and call it good. So here's what we got so far. Now that's a little bit cooler. Looks like TIG welds. <laughs> Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, and I may do a slight weave just to try and get it a little bit wider of a weld. I mean, it's not going to be much, but I think we're going to do this pass and then we're going to cap it with another. So two more passes on this, and you can see it's already probably taken twice as long as it did with the stick. So definitely TIG is awesome, but... Uh, <laughs> you, you got to like uh, taking your sweet time to do it. Let me get set up and we'll get some arc footage of this. So here in the arc footage, you're going to see a lot of things that are kind of important to pay attention to. The first one being that I dipped the tungsten shortly. You'll see it. Now I kept welding even though I dipped it, and that's because the arc cone seemed to be pretty decent still. But it's a good idea to just stop, grind your tungsten, and then restart again. Now, this is not the last pass on here. So again, it's not really a huge issue. If you're going to be welding on some kind of new plant piping, you definitely don't want to do that and just keep motoring on. You'd want to grind that out. Because if you broke the tip of the tungsten off, you could get a uh, tungsten inclusion and you'll bust x-ray. But yeah, so anyways, you can see I'm slowly motoring on here, not really moving too fast. And my amperage is around 160 amps. I'm using 1 16th diameter filler. I could have used a bigger rod and a lot more amperage. And you can see I'm holding a really tight arc gap, and I'm kind of just oscillating or weaving up and down and stopping long enough to hopefully prevent cold toes, which I had some, but it wasn't too bad. All right, now that it's in focus a little bit better, I'll shut up now. Well, I got some decent art footage, I think, but I had to weld watching the camera, on, which was quite interesting. It was pretty hard to make out what was going on through the camera lens since, you know, TIG is such a precise arc in order to get a decent arc shot. The camera basically has to be where my face would be. But we filled this in pretty decent. I did a little oscillation. I did undercut the top a couple places, but uh, it's just underfilled. We'll go back and fill that up. This is looking pretty good. I'm going to weld this corner around and fill it in a little bit more to about right here. And then I'm going to start here and fill this in and then weld the other side. Fill that in, looking real good. Let that cool again, and then I think pretty much one more pass, and that'll be it. I may up the amperage to around 170 to run it, but being that we already have a solid weld that's far over the thickness of this base material, it already arguably is at full strength. I mean, more weld on this isn't gonna make it necessarily stronger, but I will bring it out to just flush 
and then leave it. Uh, if you recall in the stick welding video that I welded this, I actually came out quite a bit past flush. Again, not really needed if you're welding it to quarter inch plate. If you're welding it to say three eighths or half inch plate, then absolutely you're gonna want to uh, flush it out and then a little bit, but being quarter, not an issue. So let's let that cool and then come back. So the arc footage on this turned out real clear and I'm pretty happy about that. But just watch how as I approach the edge or the toe of the weld, I push filler in and then I alternate side to side, not really moving too fast. And that's because at 160 to 170 amps, you can get cold toes where it doesn't wet out. But yeah, moving pretty smooth. I don't walk the cup or anything. I just freehand everything. It's a little bit harder to do definitely with a camera in front of you. But all right, keep watching. So let's see where we're at so far. Looks pretty good. The bottom toe line is a little bit cold. You can see where it's not quite wetted out perfect, but I mean, very close. And then this side, which actually both sides I did through a camera lens, a little bit cold toe right there. Top toe looks perfect, that's what you want to see. You can see the plate is definitely warped quite a bit, just as the other one. And again, this is all based on the fact that you only weld, the weld thickness needs to be as thin, or as thick as the thinnest material. So this is far too big of a weld for this thickness of material. This would be perfect on 3 8 or thicker plate. That's what you would want to see. Just for shits and giggles, you know what, I'm going to do another pass on this. Yeah, it'll warp the plate a little bit, but that way it'll match the other one as far as like overall weld thickness. And it'll look cooler. I'll be able to clean up hopefully all them cold toes. I'm not going to get any arc footage of this. We're just going to weld it out and see what we have at the end. All right, well, that was fun. <laughs> oh, that's still pretty hot. Did a weave pass to cap it off? This I could have done another pass over. You can see it's not really undercut. There's just 
little bit of underfill in there. I did an extra pass on this end and it filled out perfect. So whatever, nothing's perfect, right? Now you can see that this has pretty much the same amount of warping as the other uh, one I did with sticks. So nothing too unusual there. If this was half inch plate, it would have never warped like that. And this is the correct size weld for half inch plate. This is what you'd be wanting to aim for. Now, total time to do this, I'm gonna take a guess and say, oh man, I don't know, 45 minutes to do this. Now, I could have cranked my welder up to 210 amps. I could have used 332 filler and I probably could have got this done a lot quicker. And obviously, had I not been filming, I could have cranked this out a lot faster. If I would have gave it less time between passes to cool down, I could have got it done faster. But this is kind of like a realistic expectation. When you see TIG welds, especially thick TIG welds on stuff like pipe or really thick plate, it takes an astronomical amount of time, even at higher amperage, three, 400 amps. I mean, even stupid high amperage, it still is a very low deposition process. And that's simply, that's why they don't use TIG very often for stuff like this. I mean, it makes beautiful welds, but it's just very, very slow. So anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I don't know how relevant this is to what you're going to be doing. I mean, really, I just answered the question, could you TIG weld these on? Answer, yes. Would you want to? Probably not. But hey, you can do it. There's no real issue there. So I thought about this for a while. I'm going to make a couple more of these for my workshop and I'm going to stick weld them. But this one, I'm just going to cut out of the plate drill a couple holes and I'm going to offer this up for anyone who wants it. So if you would like to hang this on your wall as a coat hook, hat hook, or whatever else, put your name in the comments and a couple weeks from now I'll just give this away. I'll pick a name in the comments section. So if you want to hang this thing on your wall or claim you did it, be my guest. I'll give it away. So anyways, thanks for sticking around. I had a lot of fun doing this. I don't get the TIG weld that much anymore, it seems. But yeah, till next time, guys.